Hey guys, today I am playing in my little art journal and I'm showing you my reference photo. It's a photo from Pixabay, uh, which is a website with uh, free for commercial use uh, photos. And I looked actually specifically for uh, photos of Monument Valley uh, in the US. Um, I don't know, I had that in my mind. I felt like painting something like that. I've been to that place when I was 20. So many, many moons ago. Um, and I just felt like painting it. And I found this photo which um, had a nice composition. And it was actually, um, you know, rather simple. And I thought it would be a nice exercise. So I'm using here my limited palette and the colors are I used were the yellow is Sennelier Indian Yellow, um, that orangey red is Sennelier Rose Dore Madder Lake, and the turquoise is by Schminke. Um, one of these days I'm going to find out the name of that turquoise. Okay, I went and checked because it annoyed me because I use it on pretty much everything and I can never remember the name. So, Schminke calls their version of PG-50, which is the pigment, um, they call it Cobalt Turquoise. In other brands, it's sometimes called Cobalt Teal. And that's what I used here for the sky. And then I added some more color to the front. You can see in the, fa in the photo, there's this really um, dark shadow uh, across the photo in the front and I don't know I think here things kind of started to go wrong I I I'm including in this video both versions that I created and on the right side I was just playing with colors and color combinations um, I think it's actually a fun thing to uh, do in your journal you know with one side kind of trying to figure out the colors and the mixes and then the other side is the painting um, I can't say that I'm, you know, in love with uh, any of the two that I made, but it was some nice practice and yeah, I'm not sure I have found uh, a style that I really connect with and by that I mean, you know, the amount of details and the amount of layers and how to get those uh, dark shadows and how to not... Um, make certain things look very overworked, which is what I felt at some point that this was just starting to look uh, overworked. And should I add uh, black ink or not? Um, I have no idea. I, I have to keep on painting. But this was a good exercise because the shapes were relatively simple. And um, yeah, you know, it just got me to work my brush and my hand and my um, drawing skills a little bit. So I am just going in for another layer of color and you can really build up uh, the color by adding uh, more layers once the, um, the layer before is dry. And yeah, I'm painting in my Stillman and Burn uh, soft cover sketchbook. Um, and this is from the Beta series, uh, which is lovely. I really like the paper. It's uh, extra heavyweight, and I think for a journal, it's really um, a substantial paper, and it's lovely. I, I'm really enjoying this uh, the sketchbook and the size and everything. I thought it would be too small for me. I got it uh, only with the purpose of taking it with me when I am not at home. Um, which was probably a bit naive of me to do since when I leave home I usually have one or two kids with me so um, yeah I can dream on about <laughs> sitting somewhere and sketching <laughs> anyway um, so that's the book I'm working with and the brush is the travel brush uh, from Escoda Versatile this is the number 10 um, I mostly use actually the Escoda Perla line, um, which has these white type of synthetic hairs. And um, I feel it's just a touch firmer than the Versatile um, brush hairs. 
and somehow that's been working well for me um, at least in my journals so I, I think I also have a travel brush from the Perla uh, collection they're both by Escoda and both lines are fantastic but I think the Perla one are just a, a little bit uh, firmer and I like that so everything is dry and then I decided I didn't I wasn't loving it so I thought you know I can't really mess it up um, if it was something that I loved, maybe I would have just left it, but it was just okay for me. Wasn't too sure about the color choices, wasn't too sure about, you know, should I leave it? Should I do something with it? I, I just didn't know. So I decided to sketch a little bit on top of it with my uh, fountain pen. This is a platinum pen. Uh, it has a fine nib and it's beautiful. The nice thing about this one which um, is not, apparently it's not such an easy thing to find. Um, this comes with, <coughs> excuse me, uh, waterproof ink once dry um, and carbon ink. And it comes with cartridges of this type of ink. Now I have looked online and I know that there are other pens that work with um, this type of ink but you know for people who are using watercolors and um, and want a waterproof ink that's kind of a big deal and if you like fountain pens then sometimes it's tricky to find waterproof ink that comes in already in a cartridge and uh, not in a bottle so you know when you have a bottle you need a converter and then there are all kinds of ways where you can um, fill your pen and it's a whole thing that I don't feel like I want to get into so uh, I might get uh, another pen that works with these refills but maybe with a, a slightly thicker uh, nib the the one that I have I love it but it's a touch um, too fine for me sometimes I feel anyway I decided to give this another go and I thought it would be fun to have both versions in the same video and this time I started with my sketch you can see super simple I think it's a great uh, practice subject um, you know not too much detail you can't really mess it up because you can't really mess up the proportions here you know something like a street or a house is more easy to mess up or definitely a face but this is just a bunch of rocks and um, you know no offense to the amazing Monument Valley but I found it I think kind of easy to sketch so then I decided okay I'm gonna try some other colors and what you see on your screen now on the right side that wheel of fortune is what I like to call what I fondly like to call my psychotic watercolor palette and I love it. Um, I will link you to these. This one is the particularly psychotic one that has, I don't know, like a million wells, but there are smaller ones. And it comes also on, you know, a Lazy Susan, I think it's called. <laughs> I always find that, found that funny, um, the name. And so you can turn it very easily. And um, I love it. I have a lot of watercolors and I don't want to have to choose. I don't use so many watercolors in one painting, but I like having, you know, having them out in the open nearby where I can easily uh, grab them if I do want to use them. And um, while I'm enjoying using my limited palette, definitely, uh, I still use this palette all the time and usually it sits on the other side uh, I have two desks uh, so it usually six sits on the one that is not uh, below the camera but for this um, video I thought I would move it so I can use colors that are not in my limited palette the little one so for this I decided to use a different color scheme my yellow is the new Daniel Smith Aussie red gold I think it's called which is a mixture of a few pigments but it's this gorgeous you see very golden warm yellow to that I added what I thought was a great match for the photo not that you have to match your paints to the photos um, the Daniel Smith quinacridone burnt scarlet um, which you can see is this gorgeous kind of earthy reddish rustic color I don't know it's beautiful and then for my blue I went with core 
um, with the cerulean blue from core and it came in one of the sets I don't have single tubes from core because they are uh, very expensive but the sets are well priced and what's nice about the core paints is that they really push aside other paints and they spread uh, very nicely not all of their paints but many of them you know you just if you put them on a wet surface they just go whoosh I mean they don't actually make a whoosh sound but they spread that's what I want to say I'm so funny today <laughs> so <laughs> and I use that for my skies as opposed to my um, you know obsessive use of turquoise everywhere <laughs> and I like it but you know this t like this um, sketch is okay um, I don't feel that it's very me um, I feel it was me trying to kind of match some colors but I'm not in love with anything particularly that is going on here and the truth is I'm not even sure how what I would like to change I don't know but it was fun to make and um, just experiment a little bit with colors I don't know maybe I should just paint it in pink I mean <laughs> maybe that would make me happy <laughs> but yeah I don't know I just wasn't feeling it so I'm just now adding decided to add a few more details with my pen I do like that I like I like the combination of watercolor and uh, pens um, especially black ink I like that contrast but I think I like it when the watercolor part is actually very um, you know minimalistic and kind of free and uh, probably not so dark uh, so I like that contrast of you know the soft that watercolor stained look um, next to the more graphic black lines of the ink so I'm just trying to add shadows and that's at least the nice thing about using a reference photo you know you have a l you don't have to imagine these things and not that there's anything wrong with imagining I mean if you can draw beautiful things from your mind that's amazing but for me I can't well I can't I certain things I can come up with but you know such a thing with the complexities of where the shadows would be that's not something I have the skill to do at least at this point so it's really nice to have uh, a reference photo and again in this photo I um, edited it on Photoshop kind of enhanced the colors uh, to make it more appealing to me so that I would like to paint with it more now, uh, hopefully I will remember to link you to everything I used here, including the psychotic palette. And um, no offense, you know, to psychosis, it's a serious business. I just, I, I mean it as a joke that um, it's a little bit over the top, my palette, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.